All right, so you managed to get R and R Studio downloaded, and now you need to kind of get oriented and figure out what to do. It's on your computer. It should be in the Applications folder. You can find it there. The other thing is you could use Spotlight Search, Command Enter, if you or Command Spacebar, if you are on a Mac, and type in R Studio, and it'll probably come up. But we can double click here, and up comes R Studio. Here is the Promise Land, and so. You're going to notice there's kind of th multiple different areas here that can be a little bit disorienting. But first of all, you're going to see your cursor is right here. And w this is called the console. This is where everything happens. The most simple thing is we could use it as just a basic calculator. But this is basically where at the caret or at the greater than sign, I type in some command. And then beneath it, it's going to give me uh, the response or the result of that command. And a very common thing that we'll do is we'll do an assignment. We'll assign, every time I'm hitting enter to make the command go, we'll assign a, a name or a variable to something. We can just say that x equals, equals 11. And then now I can do, hey, what's x plus 5? And it's going to give me 16 because it knows there that x is 11. And you might ask yourself, what, what in the world is that thing? It's a less than sign followed by a minus sign. And that is to give this kind of some directionality. Think of 11 going into x and it's going to keep it. You can also do this. It's not preferred for some reasons we don't need to get into, but it does. But it will work something like that. So you can play around with the console there. And that's kind of where the, all the magic happens. Now... This is kind of an, in, one of the great things about R is that you're able to save your code and see what you've done. This is kind of an inconvenient place to save your code because it's mixed up with your input. And so what people will often do is they'll go up to file and then they'll make an R script. And now I have kind of a fourth window where I can type in code here. So let's say I want to do Z, I'm hitting alt and then my, holding alt and then hitting minus to get that assignment operator quickly. Let's say I want z to be four. If I'm right here, now I can hit command enter when I'm on this line and it's going to fire my code from this script down into the console and run it automatically. I could do this with anything. If I'm on the line, if I wanna do multiple lines at once, I can highlight them and then hit control or it's command enter on a Mac and it'll run all of those lines. You're, and this is a very convenient way to do it because now you can save your code in a script. This is where you see the result of the code, but this is where you do all of your typing. So I'd highly recommend do all of your typing up in the script. You're gonna notice that as we're doing this, this is how you make a vector or put together multiple numbers together. As we're doing this, this top right shows us the global environment. And this basically tells us all the variables or the objects that we have involved. So if I do Ben, Ben popped up in the global environment and now basically it, kn it knows Ben is saved and it's the number one, two, four, five. I can multiply each number in Ben by two. I get two, four, 10. And so I have an object named Ben. Here's my object. If I wanted to reset everything, I can do that and get rid of my global environment. I can rerun this code and Z and Ben will show back up there and so it's saved. And then the bottom right allows us to do some random other things. So you can notice if I plot a number, this is a super basic plot, but if I plot something, it'll show up in the bottom right. If I want to get help on something, I can do a question mark followed by the function name and then some help will show up down here. I can kind of scroll through my computer and open different R files down here. So top left is script where I can code, top right is environment where it saves what's in the environment. Bottom left is console where the codes actually run and my results are printed. And then bottom right is plots and packages and help and a variety of different things. And so that's kind of the orientation there. This is a script file where and there's kind of two elements to scripts files. I can comment if I put a hashtag first. Uh, notice that if I just try to comment, like let's just say I, I write something and I don't make it a comment. R is getting confused because it's saying like, I don't know what it's looking for comment. It's trying to interpret this. It's not thinking it's just English. But if I hit that, if I put that hashtag first, 
R knows like, hey, that's for human beings. I don't need to read that. And so that's a cool thing about R script. Oftentimes we'll use slightly more complicated, which is an R markdown. I went to new file R markdown. And these are a little bit more complex, but they're nice because they have different, they have additional functionality. And it pops up with an example, but I'm gonna delete all of the example. And so what I can do is I can make a heading with R Markdown. If you go to R Markdown, it might ask you to install something. You can say yes. I can make a heading. I can type regular text, and this is all regular text. And then if I go to insert R, this is called a code block. And so this is where I can write code. Uh, one, two, 10. So if I now hit control enter on this line, now that's running the code. And so basically I have a little more functionality. I can do comments in here, here for example. And so our markdown is a good way to blend, like it's a way to create a more full document. I have the heading, I regularly type text, I have code block that's gonna be sent to R. I can make a new heading. And now we're kind of having an outline here. Um, if you hit control alt i it'll fill in that code block for you and so let's say i want to do some more code there if i hit command shift enter it'll run the entire code block and so it goes here and so this is this r markdown is a more complicated way to to, to do that um we'll go back to the script just as an example. One of the things that's gonna come up is you're going to need to install packages. So R comes with some kind of base functionality, but the beautiful thing of R is this tidyverse series of packages and all the functionality people have built on top of it because it's open source. So just super basic. We're gonna be using, we're learning the tidyverse, team tidyverse. We're gonna be doing install packages. So I'm gonna type that and then on that line, my cursor's on the line, I'm gonna hit command enter. And it's going to go through all this stuff and it's installed it. If it's the first time, it'll take you a long time. Now, if I try to use, if I try to use the tidyverse, so empty cars is just a random data frame, a random data set. If I try to use the tidy for tidyverse, watch what's going to happen. Error could not find the function. Well, I, I installed the package. Well, the problem is installing the package puts it on your computer, but every time you open R, in order to tell it that you plan to use the package, you need to do, you need to run this line of code, library, and then the name of the package. So now it's actually loaded it into the R session, and now the functionality that comes with the tidyverse will be available. It's basically a bunch of extra functions that make things easier to use. Uh, the last thing, geeks geek out on this sort of thing you can go up to our studio and preferences and you can play around with a variety of things your preferences might look different than this these are the preferences i recommend we could go into this further at some other point but restoring data just make sure you're starting with a clean slate every time so you you know that you have to start with a clean slate and then the most fun one to play around is they have all these different options so if you like a black background you can do that um I like the white just fine, but you could go back and forth uh, with that. So that's the basics. I encourage you to open it up, play around with it. You can also save. So if I, I can save this new file. So now this is on, now let me quit out of our studio. And now it's on my desktop. Show, it's showing up on my other desktop because I have multiple monitors. But if I double click it on my desktop, I'll show you what happens is it pops up and here I am back in this new file. So you can do, you can do file save as there. Um, okay, that's the very basics.